Hey friends, well we're back in the garage working on a nugget and today's episode is all about oils. Oil leaks, oil viscosity, oil baffles, oil on my garage floor. Let's fix it. So I've had a little bit of an oil leak on the XL forever um, but it's been very minimal just a bit of a misting underneath and I'll have maybe one little drip after an event. Uh, unfortunately after Phillip Island that one little drip became a couple of drips in between sessions and it's getting a lot worse. So we need to investigate that and find out what's going on. Uh, after that we are going to fill up our car with our new Redline racing oil which I'm very excited about. Um, Redline has come aboard as a sponsor of the Nugget Project and I am so excited. Um, they're a really good company. I've been using Redline in the Sora. I used to use it in my GT4 Sleek car. Uh, it's really good stuff. Um, I've never used their race oils before though, and I'll explain a bit of that why I haven't used race oil in a street car, but we will be using it in this guy. Um, we've also got gearbox oil and all sorts of stuff, but today we are concentrating on engine oil. Anyway, let's get this sucker jacked up and find out why the hell it's leaking. Okay, so we're gonna figure out where this leak's coming from. Now, most of the oil's on this side of the car. Obviously, it gets blown around a lot on the track, um, but most of it's this side. So, having a look at the engine, it's pretty obvious where the points of failure can be. So, we've got our dipstick, um, which goes into the block, and that's got a couple of O-rings on it. We've got our camshaft here. So, we've got a seal here that seals up the camshaft. XLs are really weird. Even though it's a twin cam, there's only one external cam gear, and then it runs a chain that links them together real strange never seen it before but that's how they do it um, and then down low I'm guessing off of this um, timey belt there'd be an oil pump so there'd be an oil pump down the bottom there somewhere um, and then obviously on the bottom is our sump now there may be a bit more that's leaking but I'm pretty confident the sump's leaking regardless it might not be the only thing leaking but I think that's going to be a major thing. So we'll definitely pull the sump off today and reseal it. But we're going to have a bit more of a look. Now I've just had a look. Excuse the uh, audio because the mic's facing me. So when I turn it away, it's really quiet. I'll try and yell. But if we have a look in here around our camshaft seal, it's all really nice and dry and clean. So we can rule that out. That isn't that. Our dipstick, I did actually put O-rings on that not long ago and it seems to be sealed pretty well. So we can rule them out. This is how we diagnose cars. Now here's a little bit of a laugh for people that uh, work on cars all the time. I get some um, comments on videos going, why does it take you so long to build this car? Why does it take you so long to do this thing? Um, number one, obviously, as I've said, um, the car doesn't live with me. It's an hour and a quarter away, so I have to drive there. Other little things, like I went to go and pop the bonnet this morning and it wouldn't pop. When I got in the engine bay, that's our spring for our bonnet popper. It's actually snapped off. So I had to get my old man to help me jimmy the bonnet open while I pulled the trigger. But uh, I went and I found another spring and I bent that up and I've put that in there and that now releases properly. It's only a little thing, but that was an extra, you know, 10 minutes to find another spring and then bend it up and get the bonnet open. So it's probably 25 minutes there in just nothing. So this is why it takes so long to work on cars, because as you do one thing, you find something else that's broken or needs fixing. Well, I do anyway. Cool, anyway, let's uh, get under this car and see what else is leaking. Alrighty, so I had a quick look at the uh, workshop manual and the oil pump is, is an internal rotor type, as a lot of them are, uh, and that's run off the, the very bottom pulley. So there's really only two. So there's um, a tensioner, a tensioner, uh, top cam, and then just the bottom uh, main, what do you call it, main pulley. So it does look a little wet in there, which doesn't make me happy. So what I'm gonna do is take off the, um, the accessories belt for the alternator and then pop off the bottom cover and just have a look in there. I've got a feeling it is leaking a little bit. We'll see how bad. Um, I think it's gonna be a combination of the sump um, and that bottom seal, so. Cool, so I've had a bit of a dig. Looked in the, uh, under the cover, I've got the side covers off and everything. Old man's come and had a look too and um, uh, it's going to be one of two things. The oil uh, pump assembly, so the bolts on the bottom underneath the timing belt, and I think the gasket on the back of that is probably leaking because it seems to sort of aim all around that area. Um, but while we're in there, we'll do the bottom main seal. 
um, and we've got to take the sump off anyway to do that so we'll reseal the sump when we put it on so now we've uh, marked up our, our timings all where it's supposed to be so we've got our mark there it's all top dead center everything's right and we just i've just marked it we're going to reuse this belt it's not very old so i've marked everything with um, paint pen just so i can double confirm everything's going on right and uh yeah next to go drain the oil uh pop the sump out and uh and then we'll get this uh belt off and all that jazz and have a look Um, so we've got the exhaust off now, which gives us access to the sump. So now um, the sump's just held on with all these little 10 mil bolts. So I'm going to get under there with my whizzer and get all them off and drop the sump off. Um, I haven't started the car today, so it shouldn't have too much oil up in the engine. It should have all been down in the sump. So hopefully we won't get too many leaks on the ground. Um, but yeah, we'll get them undone and see what happens. sump off and now I'm just taking off the oil pump so what we're doing is all the all the bolts are different lengths apparently so I'm just gonna draw a rough oil pump and I just put the bolts in where I take them out so I know which one goes where that's the filter that's the front Alrighty, so that is our oil pump. Um, it's off. Didn't look like it was leaking heats, but while we've got it out, we'll do that. We'll do the water pump gasket and that main seal there. And hopefully, once we put the sump back on, seal everything, it, we shouldn't have any more leaks. Fingers crossed. Hit up our mate, Matty Tucker from Get Parts. He's a legend and he's gonna try and find us all these seals and um, gaskets and bits and bobs and then we can get that back together uh, while we're waiting for that though because it's going to be a couple of days in the meantime we've got our sump off so something i've been wanting to do is put a baffle in it so this is our sump here and it actually has somewhat of a factory baffle so what that does um these these are obviously this is a sump design for a street car it's all very basic um, you can see here, this is one of the factory baffles. So what it does is you've got your oil, this is our oil pickup here, and that sits in the bottom of the engine and sucks up uh, the oil to go in the engine. Um, what happens though is when our oil's sitting in there, we're driving around day to day, grandma going to the shops in her XL, it's all good. When you go to tracks like Phillip Island and stuff, you've got a lot of inertia, G-force left and right on the car. You can see here how the sump's got this stepped up area here and it's a bit of a ramp. Um, the oil can slosh if you're doing a corner you know you got the g-forces on the oil and it's very runny because it's hot um the oil can slosh up away from the pickup if that's happening that means the pickup is uh sucking up air and not oil and then your bearings don't have oil and then your engine dies and your car dies and you're all very sad on the side of the track so what we want to do is basically replicate this little um baffle here so when you see the oil usually sloshes up that side this baffle stops like it's still got a little bit of um holes there to stop some of the, it'll let some of the oil out but it's it'll keep the majority in there so we want to build a similar thing here so we're going to make a cad carbonated design thank you project minky um piece here so we can get it all um yes we know what we're doing and then i've got to 
piece of old steel here, which is very rusty, but it won't be once we're done with it. Uh, so we can transfer that shape onto there, um, put it in here, and then it doesn't need to be fully welded in. All it needs is uh, tack welds just to hold it in place. So we'll just do tack, 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 um, just to hold it in there. Uh, and then that's good. We don't even really, we could probably put a coat of paint in it, but you don't even need to because it's soaking in oil all the time, so it won't rust. Um, we might put a bit of high temp paint on it just to clean it all up. Um, so now I'm going to go and clean this sump up, get rid of all this old gasket goo uh, with a steel with a wire wheel, and then once it's all clean, we can get our cardboard aided design on. Now something I need to do is you can see there is a uh, pretty sweet dent there from where somebody in the past has whacked something. So I'm just going to straighten that up and then we can do a CAD setup and try and make this baffle. CAD template and so that will go in there and that'll stop the oil sloshing back up there but we're going to tilt it down a bit so it all runs back down and in um, but it can't come back up so it should be pretty good we're just going to put some tabs up here to help uh, weld it I think it should work pretty well so now we're going to transfer that over to some metal <coughs> Dad's just sandblasting the uh, piece of metal so it's nice and clean. Uh, straight out the sump so it's not bent anymore. That's good. And we've got a, a little patch of sanded so we can tack this in. Now time to give it a tack weld and we're good. You wouldn't think it's the same rusty bit of metal. We're we'll welded up. We don't have the right gas at the moment so Dad's done the best he can with the tools he's got. But he's in there. We just tacked it. Give it a clean up and uh, ready to go. Alrighty, so there is our baffled sump. It's kind of pretty good. Obviously, I mean, the welds are a bit half a dag because it doesn't have the right gas, but uh, working what we got. I'm um, giving that a clean up and uh, it's good. So I'm not going to bother painting that. It's going to be soaked in oil, but um, uh, just where the paint's burnt on the outside, I'm going to give that a good scrub and a respray before I put it back in. Uh, the only other thing I want to do is just give the oil pump a clean. It's a uh, pretty gross it's got a lot of carbon and junk in there so we'll give that a good scrub up in petrol there we go in a can like that and um, I just got to clean the bottom of the engine where the uh, where the sump was mounted just clean all those surfaces all right we're done for today I've got to go and find some gaskets and seals and we'll be back if I don't get this car finished in the next day, I'm gonna lose my YouTube channel, my wife, and my car. No, but for real, I actually need to get this car done before, uh, before the weekend. But was that a good uh, manufactured drama for you? Feels like a car show now. Right, so we have all the parts we need. We have a water pump gasket, a oil pump slash crankcase gasket, whatever the hell it's called. And somewhere around here, I also have your oil filter and new crankshaft seal. So we can get the sucker sealed up and get it ready for the weekend. Oh, and something else, we finished off our sump. I gave it a good sand and a paint and it looks nice and new. It almost looks like a brand spanker. Just need to clean a bit of the schmutz out uh, of the middle where we had our we put in our baffle and I just need to check that the dipstick fits in okay, otherwise we might need to grind it back a bit, but otherwise that's good to go. So we can seal that up soon. Uh, but first off, we need to get the rest of this in. 
So one of the biggest things about doing gaskets on all legs is to fix up uh, the surface where your gasket's gonna go. So all this, we're using a razor blade to clean off all the old gasket goo up here where the main oil feed is. It's really crusted on there. So we're gonna give it a good go. And then we use um, some brake cleaner um, before putting it back on. Everything needs to be dry for the paper style gaskets. Uh, I spoke to our mate Adam Macrow and he said, yep, make sure that's all dry and that'll come on good. Um, but another thing we need to do is I got the water pump gasket, which the water pump's just up there. I need to just dump the coolant out of it and then we can um, take off the water pump and clean all that up ready for its new gasket. So we'll do that now. Okay, so doing stuff like this, we need to get rid of, you can see all bits of the old gasket on there. So use a, a new clean razor blade. You can buy the packs of them from Bunnings, pretty cheap. And we just get rid of all this crap. And once your blade starts getting notchy, get rid of it, otherwise you're gonna scratch your housing, especially with alloy faces. Just get rid of all this junk. And all the crap inside. So when using the razor blade, make sure you don't slip off and slit your wrist. Because otherwise you bleed everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> See what working on cars does to you, it makes you want to slit your wrist. Duct tape and we'll get back to it. The pump is all cleaned up, main surfaces are all cleaned up. So now it's time to put our pump back on. So we're going to use just a tiny bit of sealant on here just to get rid of any imperfections. Put our gasket on, bolt that sucker up. Let's do it. Cool, so water pump's on. So what we do with this stuff now is leave it uh, for an hour and a half. So you do it finger tight, leave it for an hour and a half, and then you crank it up after that, and that allows the, the seal to kind of set. Um, not so prevalent with this, because we only put a, a slight smear just to take up the imperfections, but on the sump, we'll do it up and it'll just start to ooze a little bit. Leave it for an hour and a half, and then we crank it all up. Uh, cool, water pump's back on. Now we're gonna put on our new seal and do our um, front cover with our oil pump. Okay, so we've got our new seal here. Ooh, there he is, and this goes in dry. And we put the, you can see the lip side goes in. Make sure it's all clean, we've cleaned all inside this. Just gonna put in nice and square. And we've got a little bomby knocker thing here to whack her in with a love tap with a mallet. Alrighty, and so for when we put this on to the back onto the main shaft, I'm just going to use a bit of grease. So we've got our Redline CV2, which is a wheel bearing and CV joint grease. Don't need much, but we can use it for this. Just a little bit, just on the lip, just so it slides onto the uh, onto the crankshaft easily and doesn't tear anything and all that business. Perfect, and now we've got our surface cleaned in there. We've got our new genuine gasket from Hyundai. Little, uh, little tip bit for buying genuine stuff. If you go into Hyundai and say, I want parts for Hyundai XL, they start crying, and you don't want to see anybody cry. So what I did is this part number here, there's a part uh, website, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. It's parts or something, I don't know. But it has exploded diagrams of pretty much every car, every car I've owned. And you can look through and you can find bits like this, click on it and it tells you the genuine part number. And if you go into Hyundai and go, this is the part number, they hug you and they are very excited. Uh, so do that and it makes ordering a lot easier and you'd recommend and you're definitely gonna get the right part. Anyway, let's put this puppy on.
so I know which one goes where. Okay, so the, uh, the oil pump and everything's back on. We're just waiting for that to dry a little bit and then I'll tighten it all up and we'll put the timing belt on. Um, so I've just had a look at my sump. And, whoa, floppy camera. And uh, you can see there the dipstick hanging down. I just tested it and it just hits here. So I'm just gonna take a, a notch out of here. Um, and that'll allow the dipstick to come in, but it won't affect this too much. And then I can hopefully put the rest of this back together. There we go. I just used the grinder and the linisher. So I just ground the corner off and just use the linisher to make a bit of a dip for the dipstick to sit in. Ha, ah, dipstick, dip. Um, that should be good. Now I've also, Got metal filings in there, so I'm gonna go give this a good scrub out with um, degreaser and everything, get rid of all the junk and a good wash out and get it ready to put back on. sump is on so we just tightened it up just enough to let the a bit of the seal the um the gasket maker uh not to a black gasket maker just to ooze out a little bit and then uh we let that set for about an hour and a half and then we'll nip it all up good to go we've done the same on our oil pump so that's about ready to be tightened up so we'll tighten all that up um i know the oil pump is part of the sump but we haven't done the sump up super tight so if there's a tiny bit of movement there it won't be a problem um, so we'll tighten that up and we can get our timing belt back on. So we've got the sump uh, done up and a bit oozed. Good to go. We've tightened up the um, side cover here, which is the oil pump, and that's all done now. And the water pump's all done. And we've put our tensioner back on with a bit of heaving and hoeing on the spring there. Um, and now we've got our, um, our bottom sprocket, I guess, for the timing belt. And, uh, and then we can put our belt on. Cool beans, so we've got our timing belt back on. Um, basically, it's uh, it's very easy because we've only got one cam, so there's only two things to really worry about. Getting the uh, tensioner back on is a pain in the ass, but uh, you know, dealing with springs and stuff, that's gonna happen. So that little mark there, so let's, let's try and get you guys in closer. It really, really matters. I mean, you've probably got a workshop menu for this. Um, if not, get a... Sorry, my doorbell's going off at home. Um, get a workshop manual. I paid five bucks for that, I think on eBay, or 10 bucks or something, and it's the best thing ever. Cool, so we've got that little mark there. That is the uh, top dead center for the cam, and behind it is a little mark. And then if we have a look underneath here, we've got um, our little mark there, and then on the housing behind it, there's the little nubby thing. And that means that's a line. So as long as that lines up and that lines up, we're all good. So I did a, a full turn and everything lined up again. Everything's tight. So now we just need to put on our bottom pulley for our alternator belt, our little shield. And uh, that's that. All joking aside, I really do need to get this done today. So I haven't been filming much, but our alternator's back in. Our water pump pulley's back on, bottom pulley's back on. Uh, we just now need to, the sump's about ready to go, so we'll tighten that up. Little tip bit for the XL guys. If you're ever putting all this back on, um, so that bolt for the alternator actually bolts onto the top of the water pump. Make sure you put that on before you put the pulley on for your water pump, because I just figured that out. Dumb. <laughs> so do it in that order. 
Uh, cool, let's get under the sump and give it everything it's hot. Alrighty, so hopefully now this thing isn't leaking any more oil, because I hate leaky cars. My beautiful Sora, unfortunately, now 20 years old, is starting to leak out the rear main seal. And for anybody that's pulled one of the gearboxes off one of those, you know how unenthusiastic I am about that situation. That's a story in a video for another time. Anyway, so hopefully this guy's all good now. Um, we do need to do the uh, gearbox seals, uh, just the drive shaft seals, and I've got those, but that's a also a video for another time. So, let's talk about oils. So, um, a lot of you guys, like most of you guys will know a lot about oils. There's a few beginners on the show, so we're going to talk about that. Uh, when you go in and look at your oils, you'll see all sorts of different weights and things like that. You've got, uh, you know, uh, semi-synthetics and full synthetics. Um, and then you've got the number system, like a, a 530 or a 1040, things like that. So basically, the, the numbers on there are the weight of the oil. So how, uh, the, how viscous it is, how thick it is. Um, we are going to be using our Redline oils here. Now this only has one number because, it, because it's a race oil and we'll talk about that later on. Um, but most oils you see it has like a, um, a 1030 or a 2040 or something like that. And it'll say uh, five, say like a 5W40. What that means is the first number is the W is your, they call it the winter weight. So that's the cold weight. So that's when you're starting the engine and the uh, oil's cold, that's how thick it is. So for instance, if you live in a cold country like Finland or somewhere, or where, where the hell are Volvos made? Sweden? Somewhere cold like that. Um, our Volvo actually from the factory came with a 020, which is crazy, really because they're in cold environments and they use very tight tolerances on their bearings. But I thought that was pretty amazing. It's a very thin oil. Uh, and I believe the reason for that would be it's because it's so bloody cold where they're made. Um, so you want a thinner oil so it runs around and when the oil gets hotter, it gets thinner. So the second number is your operating temperature. So once the oil is up to operating temperature, that's how thick it is. So on this, that's a 30 weight. Um, so say if you've got a 1040, it'll be a 10 weight when it's cold, it means the oil can travel around the engine while it's cold. And then as it warms up, it gets up to operating temperature and then it's a 40 weight. It should stay at 40 weight unless it overheats or weird things like that happen. Anyway, if you want to know what oil to use in your engine, there's a heap of websites that give you uh, stats for your car. Um, my Sorora has actually got it written in the bonnet. If you flip it up under there, it tells you the uh, weight to use. I think it's a, a 1040 in the Sorora um, or 1030. And yeah, just use the recommended oil. Um, I won't go into too much about the synthetics, the semi-synthetics and full synthetics. Basically, a full synthetic is a much more refined oil. Uh, it's been through a lot more of a refining process and in general is a better quality oil. Um, so in high performance machines like an XL, you'd use a full synthetic. Um, let's have a talk quickly about race oils. So this red line do make um, oils for car, you know, for general road use, and then they do their race series, which is what we have here. Um, the reason they don't put a cold weight on there is they're basically saying is race cars get up to temperature. You don't go out and just start booting around a race car when it's cold. You warm it up, get it up to operating temperature, and then you start booting it. So they don't really worry about the cold weight. I think the cold weight on this is about a five. But the idea is you're going to warm up your race car before you boot it. So they just put the operating temperature weight on there. Now, the main difference between race oils and normal oils. There's a bunch of different grades of oils. Um, the, the oil rating is an SAE. which stands for the Society of Automotive Engineers. And they have basically said this is the, the weighting system we use for oils. Um, they have a grading system as well for the quality of oils. I think it goes up to five or six now. Basically, it's how refined and the quality of the oil and also the base stock used for the oil. Um, this Redline oil, I think it goes up to five. This is a, a, a grade five. This is the highest grade you can get in oils. Uh, a lot of engine oils for your normal car is a three or four. Below that is basically getting into crude oil and you stick that in your tractor, that sort of stuff. Um, so with, with race oils, you'll, get, you'll be using a high grade oil, like a, like a level five. Um, and then the, the big differences between this and your standard road car oil, like we use in the Sora and things like that, those cars have, what's it called? There's a name for it. Detergency and dissipants. That sounds about right. Basically what that does is as your engine wears, um, and you get blow by on the rings and all that sort of stuff, you get contaminants in the oil. 
those oils are designed to actually hold that and suspend it in the oil. So when you do your regular oil changes every sort of 5,000K, 10,000K, whatever you do it at, um, when you drain the oil, it takes all that with it, but it's designed to sort of um, clean your engine and take all that sort of stuff with it. But you do your, you know, your engine oil changes after a long period of time. With race oils, usually change it every day or so every race day or every second race day or something like that. You don't keep the oil in there for very long. This doesn't have any of those detergents or any of those cleaners because it's designed to basically perform at its best and then be dumped. So it doesn't have any of those cleaning agents. That's one of the major differences. The next thing is this oil contains a ZDDP, which is an anti-friction uh, property for the oil. Uh, normal oils have this, and it, it's a quite an expensive uh, component in the refining process. Uh, standard road going oils have about 800 to 1200 parts per million of ZDDP. Uh, this has 2200 parts per million of ZDDP, so it's more than double what's in a normal road going oil. What ZDDP does is it helps with um, high pressure and high heat to protect the engine. Uh, the benefits of that is obviously it keeps your engine from dying when you're out there booting around on tracks, you're at high heat all the time, unlike road going cars where you're just cruising along, you're going to be at full throttle the whole time. So the high levels of ZDDP is great for um, stopping engine wear in uh, high performance situations, high heat, high pressure, all that sort of stuff. Um, the reason you don't want that much in a road going car as well is because it damages your um, uh, emission system. So you know all your catalytic converters especially, it wrecks catalytic converters. Um, it, all your, you know, like in your, if you go and look up in the engine bay of a Golf or a Touareg or something like that, it is full of emission stuff, especially in Australia. We have a lot of emissions rules. High ZDDP content does degrade those, and if it's quite low, it's fine. If you start running stuff like this with a higher content, it's going to destroy those, and then you've got to go to the dealership and get it fixed. Race car like this, we don't have a cat, we don't have any emission systems, we don't have those problems. It's more important to keep the engine safe and controlled under high temperatures. So the other thing about redline oils, which makes it different from standard uh, engine going oils, and this can be for a, a lot of high performance oils, but specifically redline, is it uses the highest base stock. So you, they're starting with the best quality uh, crude oil you can get. Uh, they're not trying to refine from junk barrels. These are the, they buy the best stuff and then they start refining from there. So they use uh, PAO and ester. The ester is, is one of the best quality oil mixes. I'm not an oil expert, bear with me here. Um, and they actually add oxygen molecules to the ester. The idea of that is um, the internal parts of engines are coated in um, metal oxide and oxygen is attracted to metal oxide. So when they have the extra mole uh, oxygen molecules in there, it actually sticks to the surfaces. So it's attracted to you know your white metal bearings and all that sort of stuff to help uh, lubricate the engine. So the benefit of those um, of using esters is it doesn't break down as much in high performance situations. So when you get the real heat and stuff like that, you'll find that a uh, standard oil, say if it's a 30 weight, if you're using a hydrocarbon oil or a lower grade oil, when it starts to get over operating temperatures, if you're really pushing it, it'll start to break down. So that 30 then becomes a 20 and then maybe becomes a 10 and then you're running an oil that's too thin for that engine and that's when you start to get a lot of wear or you just get massive failure. Um, when you're running high quality and you've got those, um, you know, the ester based oils, things like that, um, that 30 stays a 30 for a lot longer. So you can run it a lot higher and it won't break down. Obviously, if you push anything hard enough, it will break down, but this will give you the best chance ever to keep your car in good condition and not breaking. So that is what we are using in our NUG. Oh, just on a side note, if you want to know um, if this is any good, if you guys watch the Bad Obsession Motorsport guys and Project Minky, they use Redline in all their cars. So that's pretty much enough advertising for me. Little tip when pouring oil. I uh, see this a lot. People go to pour oil that way. It makes the oil glug and then it glugs all over the place. Hold it sideways. It doesn't glug that way, only a little bit. And stops you getting oil everywhere. Oh, it's blue. Yeah, blue oil. Nugget blue oil for the nug. I like it.
Cool, next thing we need to do is our cooling system. So, thanks again to Redline, we've got this uh, water wetter. So it's a little bit different from coolant, um, from standard coolant for a street car. Uh, it doesn't have antifreeze in it. This is purely just for going fast. Um, what the water wetter does is it's basically a heat transfer fluid. So it helps to um, transfer the heat uh, into the radiator from the block, all that sort of stuff. It basically disperses your heat better. They find using a water wetter over standard coolant, your cylinder head is usually about sort of 12 to 13 degrees cooler. I like that. Um, so for this car, we don't actually have a big cooling system. I'm only going to use half this bottle. So it's pretty good value. So we use half of that and just use distilled water for the rest. And that's our cooling system done. So there we go. Only time will tell if we have fixed our oil leaks, but uh, really that should have done it, you'd hope. We'll find out. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. That's how we fix oil leaks. That's how we put a baffle in our sump. A little bit of info about oils there. Um, I don't want to sound too um, commercially or preachy about the oil stuff, but um, I really do appreciate Redline coming on board and hooking us up with engine oil and gearbox oil and all that sort of stuff. We'll do gearbox soon. Um, because it really helps me get out and do stuff, especially this year with COVID. I know a lot of people have suffered and I was out of work for almost six months, which really sucks. So um, having the help to be able to get back on track is really nice and really appreciated. So I don't want to sound like Sam Crack and put in a really cool, funky ad that is cringeworthy. Um, I want to try and just tell you guys I'm getting support and I really appreciate it. And it's good stuff too. I, I wouldn't use it if it was junk. You know, if um, Woolies came to me and said, hey, let's stick home brand in the nugget sure can you give me some free bananas or something instead um so anyway we've got haunted hills this saturday which is really cool because that's the first time we drove this car so now we're going to go back and we're going to try it now the car's finished with our finished suspension and hopefully the person behind the wheel is a little bit better now too so uh check back in early next week for that video thanks for watching guys bye